Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna record these. This is a related rates problem. Um, can you repeat the statement? Okay, so we have uh, water with a radius of five. We know that we're asked about area, and the circular area is pi r squared. So we have a picture of a circle. We have the formula of area, and we have what's changing. So the radius was changing at four centimeters per second, and the radius is five centimeters, right? So you get all your information on there. Do we know what the area is changing at? No, that's actually what we were asked. Can we calculate the area when the radius is 5? Yeah, that's 25 pi, right? Okay, so this is, just get your information on paper. Like, read the problem, put it on paper, right? Remember, um, so PF Changa is what your first objective is. Okay, what do you do once you have all that information? Derive. Yep, and it's with respect to the time. All right, sorry, my writing is still not the greatest on this. <laughs> so what's the derivative of the formula? Yeah, what, what else do we have to include in that, since it's with respect to t? Okay. What about on this left side? Okay, now you have your derivative. Always remember it's implicit because the t does not match a or all. All right, so we know r is 5 and dr dt is 4, correct? So the adt is 40 pi centimeters squared per second. How about we try one without me doing it, and I'll help you. Well, let's do. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Da, eraser. Thank you. Um, let's see. Phone, rockets, bathtubs, we'll do that one next. Let's do this one. It's the same exact uh, style of problem. Okay. So we have. The area of a circle increases at a rate of one centimeter square per second. How fast is the radius changing when the radius is 20?
Looking good so far. Yikes. Saw that on everybody's paper. <clears throat> A couple of you already passed that. Yeah, hopefully we finish. You guys are quick. So D, same derivative as before. Goodness. So, 1 equals 2 pi 2. So, DRDT is, what'd you get? Yep, centimeters per second. Yes? <clears throat> Fantastic. Questions? Okay. Real easy when the problem is exactly like the example. But not exactly, though, because you weren't given, this time you were given DADT instead of DRDT. All right. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what was the... Next, the, ba the fish tank problem. So we know that it's a rectangular prism, right? That is ugly. Okay, three by two on the base. Do we know the height? No. All right, picture, what's our formula? The volume. Okay, do we know the length and the width? And they do not change, correct? So we can plug those right in. can change uh, dv dt right and dh dt do we have numbers for those one was was it point three which one Water flows into the fish tank and we have three 
meters, cubic meters per minute, right? So that's the volume change. We do not know height. And at that moment, does it give us a height? No. Okay, we're not going to need those values. Okay, so... I'll show you why we don't need those values and how I know that. What is the derivative? DH dt. Okay. Okay, so do you see, do we have a V or an H in here? No, so that's why we don't need these, right? Because the derivative doesn't have a V or an H in it. If you needed those values, you would have been given one or the other, right? So we know that 3 equals 6 dh dt. The volume is 0.3. Oh, that does change things. So this is 0 0.3. Oh boy, I'm still getting used to writing on this thing. Uh, so what's the HDT? 0 0.3 over 6. Yep. And what are the units? Meters per minute. Okay. Questions? All right, let's try a very similar problem. Here's a rectangular bathtub problem. Same setup and everything, really. Maybe a different, yeah, we have DHDT now instead of DV, but that you've handled. So. At what rate is water pouring into a rectangular bathtub with base 4 by 3 if the water level rises at a rate of 4 feet per minute? If you've finished the rectangle one already, try uh, 7B.
interesante to move this. Do you guys need that anymore? Bailey, do you need it? Which one are we on? Okay. So. Hey, can what? How about it? You have 48. Okay. And it is cubic feet per minute. Good. Any questions on that one? All right. Let's, uh, what was another one that was in the video? Cone problems are pretty common. So water pours into a conical tank. Okay. Of height 10 meters. Oh, this, yeah, these are, these are good ones. Um, <clears throat> and radius 4 meters. So H is 4. Tank is 10 and 4 at a rate of 6 cubic meters per minute. All right. At what rate is the water level rising when the level is 5 meters? The so DHDT is our question. What is the formula for cone volume? Pi r squared h over 3, I believe. So, there should be a question mark. Okay. Okay. 
So the first thing that we have to realize on these problems is that um, the water level is different than the cone height. Okay. See how we have two unknowns here? And we don't know the radius yet of the water. So in order to get the radius, we have to actually solve a proportion. Okay. So um, this is kind of the next level up in difficulty. Is having to do an intermediate step here. Goodness me. Screen is just not calibrated quite perfectly. Okay, we know that uh, 10 to 4 is the ratio of height to radius, right? What is that equal to? 5 to something. Yeah, so the R is 2. Okay. So the volume would be 4 times 5, 20 pi over 3. We're not going to need that, I don't think. But Okay. Questions on where that came from? Okay, that's just one little intermediate step you had to do, right? Because we didn't know R. Um, we can also have DR, DT changing. But we are not going to need that. Um, okay, we also can... Uh, relate. Whoa. Um, we need to get rid of one of these variables. Because we want one variable there. So we need to do... Ah! Too close to the edge of the screen. All right. So it's the same proportion. H equals 10 over 4R, correct? So 5 over 2R. And that's what we got to plug in here to get rid of a variable. So the volume is 5 pi R cubed over. That's where a lot of people get lost. You have to use proportions to find everything. Okay. Uh, so your next is what? Yep. But now that we've got rid of a variable, it's an easy derivative. All right, see, this would have been a product rule, but we don't have to worry about it now. So D, V, D, T. Uh, what we got? 5 pi r squared over 2. Dr dt. And then plug everything in. Yo. I don't know. So are they not in Jenna. Oh, okay. So she's up there somewhere. How's, uh, how's this thing working? It's coming along. Yeah, we're actually recording a video right now.
Yeah, they're a little confused last night's video, so we just popped another one on and we're hit and go. A little harder to write on than the board, but I'm getting used to it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, so what do we get? The RDT is. Oh, nice. We don't know DRDT, do we? Yep, you got it. Well done, correcting the math teacher. Uh, six. Twenty or ten pi six over ten pi is three over five. Oh, the Lord, that's an ugly three. Okay. I am going to... Okay, any questions? That's about as hard as you're going to see. Like, we can make these really, really hard to the point where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really hard for me, right? <laughs> but this is about as hard as you need to see is that one little intermediate step. So um, let's try example two here. On your own. And then we'll take our break. There is one of these on the test. It is a free response worth three points. It is a very straightforward problem. I just looked.
All right, what do you got? So you draw your picture, 10, 15, right? But if you look at the problem, it's the ladder being pushed toward the wall. At a rate, correct? How fast is the top of the ladder moving at 12 seconds? So we actually need this distance at 12 seconds later. Okay. So at 12 seconds, you got your, I saw you guys have your formula. It's changing. Okay. At 12 seconds, Z is 15, X is 10 minus 12 times 0 0.1414, All right? So what is that number? So let's call that 1.7, so 10.3. <laughs> All right. And then Y, we solve for Y, it's going to be the square root of 15 squared minus 8.3 squared, if your Pythagorean theorem is correct, right? Go. Oh. Which is what? Okay, and then put your changes in. Negative point four one one four one four. Why did I make it negative? Correct. DT. And dy dt is what we're asked about. Did that help? Hope. Mm -hmm. Okay, finish the problem.
Maybe I get the solution. B mark. What'd you get? I got point zero nine three. Yeah. Unless I made an error, <laughs> somebody can see. Should be positive. Because when you got you know, this term is negative, when you add it to the other side and divide by a positive. All right, 